Coming up on today's Airborne, more medical scrutiny. The FAA is to begin examining body mass index for pilot candidates. The FAA granted certification for Bombardier's Learjet 75 aircraft last week. And Boeing launches its 777X with record-breaking orders and commitments. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's edition of Airborne, our newsroom got a late-breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Hi, folks. The Aircraft Electronics Association has just announced its third quarter avionics market report for the year, and the news is good. In the months of July, August, and September 2013, total worldwide avionics sales amounted to more than $1.72 billion. As reported by the 20 aviation electronics manufacturers participating in the report. The extent of the quarterly report simply is one total number, the collective sales figure, both forward fit and retrofit, for the current time period sales as received from the participating manufacturers. I'm pleased to report that this figure represents the largest amount of sales so far in 2013. First quarter sales amounted to right at $1.7 billion with second quarter sales lagging behind just a bit at $1.62 billion. So comparing second quarter to third quarter, industry sales have increased by nearly $100 million. Last year's total year-end sales for 2012 amounted to nearly $6.3 billion, which puts 2013 on a good track. The 2013 year-end report will be announced at the 57th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show. March 12th to 15th, 2014 in Nashville, Tennessee. As always, ANN will be there to provide live coverage, commentary, and quite a bit of additional programming for that show. For the Aero News Network, Airborne, and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. A pilot certificate already includes the physical description of the pilot by listing height, weight, and color of hair and eyes. Is next size soon to be added? Well, the FAA is preparing new guidelines for its medical examiners that could disqualify many pilots because of their body mass index, also known as BMI. Neck size is an indicator that the body mass index may exceed the FAA's limits. According to studies, if the BMI exceeds 40 and the neck circumference exceeds 17 inches, there is a substantial chance that the applicant will have a condition known as obstructive sleep apnea, also called OSA. It's believed that these conditions have led to some instances of pilots falling asleep while in command of an aircraft. Airman applicants with a BMI of 40 or more will have to be evaluated by a physician who is a board certified sleep specialist. And anyone who is diagnosed with OSA will have to be treated before they can be medically certificated. This evaluation and treatment is a costly process. We'll keep you posted on how this plays out. Ralph Axe, Vice President and General Manager of Learjet Bombardier Business Aircraft, said, quote, We are delighted to have received FAA certification for the first Learjet 75 business jet. This jet is clearly a leader among its peers, end quote. The aircraft has enhanced performance through an engine thrust increase with an improved Honeywell engine that results in an expected 9% improvement in field performance under hot and high conditions, and up to a 4% improvement in fuel efficiency. The new avionics system contributes to achieving weight savings, and the new canted winglets improve aerodynamic efficiency. The aircraft was certified with the Bombardier Vision Flight Deck, which the company says is designed to deliver a completely new cockpit experience. The Bombardier Vision Flight Deck for Learjet 70 and Learjet 75 aircraft features the fully integrated Garmin G5000 digital avionics suite, designed with leading edge technology and one of the most intuitive crew interfaces available. Boeing launched the 777X program at the 2013 Dubai Air Show on Sunday with a record-breaking number of customer orders and commitments for the newest member of its Twin Isle product family. Agreements for 259 airplanes from four customers across Europe and the Middle East provide a strong foundation to support development and production of the airplane. 
representing the largest product launch in commercial jetliner history by dollar value. The 777X orders and commitments include Lufthansa with 34 airplanes, Etihad Airways with 25, Qatar Airways with 50, and Emirates with 150 planes. The combined value of the agreement is more than $95 billion at list prices. Boeing says that the new GE 9X engine and an all-new high-efficiency composite wing that has a longer span than today's 777 will produce 12% more fuel efficiency than any competing airplane. The airplane's folding raked wingtips provide complete airport gate compatibility. Boeing's Grand Slam order of 777X aircraft now leaves the company with some decisions regarding where to produce the aircraft. As previously reported on Airborne, the International Association of Machinists declined a contract offer from Boeing that could have kept the work and jobs in the Puget Sound region. It didn't take very long for Boeing officials to make good on their promise to look outside the Puget Sound region for a manufacturing site for the 777X. It's reported that Long Beach, California may be at the top of the list. The Boeing Long Beach facility recently announced the end of production of the C-17 military transport plane assembled at the California facility. Boeing spokesman Doug Alder said, quote, We are actively engaged in pursuing all options, end quote. Boeing says it has no plans to reopen negotiations with the IAM until closer to the current contract's expiration date in September of 2016. Pilot Brian Nicholson did a great job of making an emergency landing last August on Pennsylvania Turnpike Route 43 after his engine failed due to a prop failure. However, Nicholson recently got a bill from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for nearly $3,000. He was charged for overtime costs for the highway workers who were on the scene while they waited for the plane to be towed away. And that's after he paid over $1,000 to have the plane disassembled and put on a truck for transport because they would not allow him to fly it off the turnpike. He said he had a propeller and mechanic brought to the scene and, quote, I could have been out of that area in 15 minutes, end quote. The Turnpike Commission said the decision to prohibit the pilot from taking off on the turnpike was made in the interest of customer safety and also because of the additional cost they would have incurred to shut down the road during the takeoff. They also said it's standard practice for the turnpike to seek reparations after an incident that necessitates involvement of our personnel. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or a podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. American Legend Aircraft Company announced that its Super Legend has completed SLSA approval and FAA certification review. 
The Super Legend is a Lycoming powered version of the Legend Cub with a high performance Lycoming 0233 engine. It features wing flaps, large tail feathers, an enhanced baggage area, extended windows, carbon fiber components, and adjustable seating. Typically configured, the Super Legend incorporates electronic flight displays, night VFR capability, and more. The SLSA certification limits the gross weight to 1,320 pounds, allowing nearly 500 pounds of useful payload. As an amateur build kit, the same airframe wing structure can be certified to 1,750 pounds maximum gross weight. American Legend says the Super Legend achieves its performance by using maximum horsepower with no RPM limitations. A Tartarstan Airlines Boeing 737 on a flight from Moscow to Kazan went down Sunday after missing its initial approach to the Kazan International Airport. The airplane carried 44 passengers and six crew members. All were fatally injured in the accident. Local officials report that there was light rains and winds of about 18 miles per hour at the time of the accident. Reports are that the airplane was 23 years old. There were no technical problems reported with the airplane. However, initial reports indicate that the pilot told air traffic controllers that the plane was not ready to land. The transport minister told reporters that the plane was, quote, vertical, practically vertical, end quote, when it impacted the terrain. A NASA mission that will investigate how Mars lost its atmosphere and abundant liquid water launched into space on Monday from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Lockheed Martin built the spacecraft and is responsible for mission operations. The University of California at Berkeley's Space Science Laboratory provided scientific instruments for the mission. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California provides navigation support and deep space network support and Electro-Telecommunications relays hardware and operations. Launch management is the responsibility of NASA's Launch Services Program at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. David Mitchell, MAVEN Project Manager at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said, quote, The team overcame every challenge it encountered and still kept MAVEN on schedule and on budget. The government industry and university partnership was determined and focused to return to Mars sooner, not later." End quote. The pilot shortage that is looming for the airline industry has already hit general aviation, and that has manufacturers of general aviation airplanes concerned. It's reported that the number of active private pilots has fallen about 24 percent from 2002 to 2012, and the declining number of private pilots is filtering down through flight schools. While there's a segment of the population, business owners, mostly 40 and above, that is still expressing an interest in learning to fly, younger people do not think they have the resources to throw at getting a pilot certificate, simply for the pleasure of flying. Some flight schools are having trouble finding qualified flight instructors to teach the ones that do. FAA statistics show that while there are fewer active private pilots, the number of student pilots entering training is growing but they don't finish or go on to get instrument, commercial, or flight instructor certifications. We at ANN believe that the industry needs to develop a reasonable career path to becoming a professional flight instructor, but that's another story. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Join us again next Tuesday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.